everyone and good morning. Welcome to Let's Do Research with Dr. S. I am Dr. Sarah Namoko and I am your partner in your research journey. In this video, we shall be talking about pilot testing and pre-testing of your survey instrument. In my previous videos, you have learned that the most common type of instruments used in survey research are questionnaire and interview schedule. The question items in your survey instrument could be structured items, meaning that your questions could be either, either closed and ended or it is multiple choice questions, meaning that your respondents will not uh, supply you with any other answers aside from the ones that you have indicated in your research questionnaire. Or it can be unstructured items. It means that uh, your questions are open-ended or your respondents will need to supply with answers your question items. Your research instrument could be answerable with a scale. This scale could be a Likert scale. It can be a 3-point Likert scale, 5-point Likert scale, 7-point Likert scale, or it can be Unsurable with a semantic differential, or it can be unsurable with a hedonic scale. Okay. And another structure of a survey instrument is it is a ranking survey instrument, meaning that you will ask your students or your respondents to rank the items according to their preference or according to their perspectives, or it can also be a binary survey instrument like the the respondents will need to answer with yes or no true or false right or wrong or it can be a checklist or you might require your respondents to provide free responses to your questions such as asking them to describe something enumerate something narrate something okay so these are the different structures of research instruments used in a survey research. Now the question is, do we need to pre-test the research instrument? According to Backstrom and Harsh in 1963, there is no amount of intellectual exercise that can substitute for testing an instrument that is designed to communicate with ordinary people. Remember friends that your mindset, your way of thinking may be different from the way of thinking of those elementary pupils that you want to survey. Or your mindset or your way of thinking is different from the secondary high school students or from the college students, university students. Or if you are an academician, your mindset may be different from the farmers from the fisher folks, from the businessmen, from the medicine practitioners. That is why you have to undergo your research instrument to a pretest so that these people, this target population that you want your survey instrument to be answered, can understand your research items. Therefore, according to Holland in 2018, surveys must be thoroughly pre-tested before they are conducted or before they are launched to our respondents. Now, according to Sekaran, to ensure that the meaning of the question items are clear to the respondents, and that the respondents will clearly understand the questions the way they are designed and intended, it is very important that a survey questionnaire must be pre-tested. Now, given these arguments, friends, before you, uh, before you actually conduct your data gathering, your research instrument must be pre-tested. Now, is it pilot testing or is it pre-testing. In an article by Mumtaz Ali Memon, Hiram Ting, Professor Ramaya, by the way, Professor Ramaya is one of my mentors in the University Science Malaysia. In this article that they have published, they said that although pre-testing is often understood as a pilot study, 
Both serve distinctive purpose. They are similar, but they are different from each other. Okay, so what is pilot study? According to scholars, a pilot study is a mini version of a full-scale study. It is also termed as a trial run done in preparation of the complete study to be undertaken in order to in order to ensure that a full-fledged study will be carried out successfully. In other words, it is a feasibility study. It is a, it is a tryout not only of research techniques and methods, but also of questionnaires and interviews. In other words, my dear friends, doing a pilot study is not only testing the research question or the research instrument but it is trying that it is actually testing the feasibility of the research techniques the methods of data collection the methodology of the entire study to understand better the concept of a pilot study several scholars gave an analogy of this concept according to DeVos Doing a pilot study is to see if the beast will fly. According to Blackster, Huge and Tight, uh, doing pilot study is actually a reassessment without tears. And according to, I don't know the name, it's difficult. He said, do not take the risk. Pilot test first. The general goal of doing pilot study is to save some time to save effort and to save money which can be lost if a major research study fails because of unforeseen attributes. To discuss in details, doing a pilot study aimed to achieve the following objectives. Number one is to test the adequacy of the research instrument. Second is to assess the feasibility of a full-scale project. Third, it is intended to assess whether the research protocol is realistic and workable. It is also intended to reveal logistic issues, to collect preliminary data, to ensure whether the sampling frame and techniques are effective, to determine the sample size, and to convince the funding bodies that the major study is feasible and worth funding. Take note, friends, that Pilot study is not only limited to uh, evaluating the effectiveness of your research instrument, but of the whole study itself. Remember that the pilot study sample is inappropriate to be used as the main study sample. Meaning, it means that if in your target population, you have identified a small group to be your pilot study respondents. Do not employ these people anymore to be your actual respondents of the actual study. What is the size? What is the ample size for pilot study? According to Cooper and Schindler, a sample size between 25 and 100 is okay. According to... Hill, Isaac, and Michael, a range of 10 to 30 individuals are enough for a pilot test. And then according to Connelly in 2008, a sample size should be 10% of the sample projected for the main study. Say for example, your sample size is 200, then 20 would be okay. Or if your sample size is 500, then 50 individuals would be okay to be your sample size for pilot study. However, friends, you should take note of this. Pilot study using questionnaire-based survey might not be feasible or might not be necessary when the target population is relatively small or the respondents are relatively difficult to get. Do not do pilot study anymore if your, your target population is small. Because remember, you will not be employing 
the respondents during your pilot study into the actual study. So if you are taking say 20 or 30 out of your actual your out of your target population and your population is just small, what can you do? So you will you will lack the number of sufficient respondents for your study. Now let's proceed to pre-testing. Pre-testing, according to Kumar, Talib, and Ramaya, is done to ensure whether the wordings of the questions is correct, the sequence of questions is correct, or the respondents have clearly understood all the questions. Pre-testing is also employed if you want to ensure whether additional questions are needed or some questions should be eliminated from your research instrument. And to ensure that the instructions are clear and adequate. Now, take note, friends. In pre-testing, you are concerned with the research instrument, whether it is clearly understood, it is well-worded, it is sufficient. Meanwhile, pilot testing is to test the, the whole research, only in a miniature scale. Okay. Now, all developed scales or items, whether it is adopted or adapted, should be pre-tested. Why? Because we want to confirm whether the questions work accurately in a new setting with the new respondents. So, whether you borrow the items verbatim or you borrow the items and you modify the items, in the context of your study, your research instrument should be pre-tested. Now, there are five fundamental issues of pre-testing a questionnaire. Number one is relating to the specific items to be pre-tested, to the method to be used in conducting the pre-test, the persons who should conduct the pre-testing, the participants who should be the subjects in the pretest, and the sample size needed for the pretest. So, we will discuss each of them one by one. Relating to the specific items to be tested, there are two approaches. One is about the questionnaire itself, and the other one is the specific questions within your questionnaire. In the questionnaire itself, you are investigating or assessing the layout, the length, the form, the sequencing of your questions in the research instrument. On the other hand, for the specific questions, you are more interested to the question items, whether your respondents understand your question items the way you want them to understand the question items. Next issue in pre-testing is the method by which it will be conducted. Now, there are three methods. It is cognitive or personal interviews, telephone interviews, or male self reports but according to according to scholars cognitive or personal interviews is more preferred because through this manner the researcher is able to immediately determine if the respondents has difficulty understanding the research questions contained in the research instrument now, cognitive interview has two types, debriefing method and protocol method. In the debriefing method, you will ask your respondent to answer the questionnaire completely. And while the, res the respondent is answering, you observe the respondent for any facial expression, for any gestures, or for any behavior that may indicate that he does not understand the questions. And after the respondent has answered the questionnaire completely, then the researcher will interview the respondent any problems that the respondent may have encountered while answering the questionnaire. On the other hand, in the protocol method, the respondent is asked to express his or her thoughts once it occurs while answering the questionnaire. Meaning that, as the respondents will answer, 
and along the way he has difficulty understanding the question items he is encouraged to talk about it another another fundamental issue that we need to consider in pretesting is the person who is going to conduct the pretesting according to uh, scholars only the best interviewer should conduct pretesting according to hunt only those who have level of competence in doing the interview why because good interviewers have the keen ability to observe any uneasiness they can observe confusion and resistance among the respondents uh, just a little a little facial expression they can already tell that there is something wrong in the research instrument now who should be the participants according to tall and hawkins these should be the individuals who are similar to the target population or uh, the typical or representative of the actual population in, in other words they should be sample of the target population however according to brown and bake participants should include individuals who are adverse and favorable as well as typical respondents why because he is encouraging a heterogeneous respondents to cater the extremes of the examples who may have some intellectual, emotional, and attitudinal issues. Meaning that you may include the brilliant ones, the not so brilliant ones, the emotionally disturbed, the emotionally happy fulfilled individuals, the problematic people, and the kind people. Because it is possible that in your target population, you can have these people, this kind of people in your target population. In other words, whatever are the responses or whatever are the comments from these heterogeneous respondents can be contributing to you correct your research instrument after that pre-testing process. And then according also by the, same, by the same author, he said that if you are going to employ this kind of sample or participants during pre-testing, you, you do not require probability sampling or purposive sampling. You just employ convenient sampling because you have to identify these people. Now, what should be the sample size? Actually, it depends. Of course, if your questionnaire is long and complex, you will need a bigger sample. But if your questionnaire is short, then a small sample will be enough. Okay? Pilot study and pre-testing must be done to prevent unwarranted problems that would cause measurement errors. Pilot study is to try out the research questions, the methodology, the research instrument, the techniques while well, pre-testing is to ensure that your research instrument is clearly understood by your respondents. As we end, I would like to bring you to the references which I have used in the development of this tutorial video. Once again, this is Dr. Sarah Namoko and I would like to thank you for taking time to watch and I hope you learned something, something from this video tutorial. Bye-bye and God bless.